Hello and welcome back to the channel and another video on Serious About Salvage. Today I've got another car, I'm looking right at it and I'll tell you now, I may have just bought a lemon. Um, from first glances it's looking like a doctored up Copart special but it's not from Copart. Uh, yeah. Let's just turn around and I'll show you exactly what I've got and why I'm thinking this. So there it is, it's a 2015 BMW 220i M Sport. It's actually a nice car, it is a nice car. I like the pearl white, it's like a pearl white colour. And I mean, it has damage. <clears throat> I always go for cars with damage or something that gives me a reason why it's at auction got damage on the boot and then I mean I had noticed that the front bumper had these washer jets and the fact that it didn't have Zenons. I'm not sure what this car would have come with from standard some came with Zenons, some didn't but it's pretty obvious this isn't the original bumper which I was kind of suspecting on the pictures anyway so as you can see it's a very very bad paint job and it's blue underneath so this isn't the original bumper okay so we know something's gone on some at some point somewhere <clears throat> with this car it's listed as a non-runner um and looking at the mot history <coughs> which you can do yourself you've just seen the reg it's not been mot for like a year so they also didn't show the clocks they showed the mileage but no power to the clock so i was thinking telltale signs this of a stolen recovered because <clears throat> quite often they take a quite a while to get through watch and they might have been it might have been hiding away somewhere for the best part of a year we don't know that that's what it kind of looked like at auction and this isn't from like i say copart and as far as i'm aware <clears throat> the auction that this came from they don't do private sales uh, so I bought it thinking that that it probably looks like a um, you know stolen recovered it's got a key uh, and that the fact that it's keyless they probably just coded something else to it and this key no longer is coded to it that was the kind of basis I were going off uh, when I got there I suddenly I very quickly found out that they took it out of the repossessions lot so this car looks like it was actually a repossession and I'm kind of thinking that it's something that something someone's bought they've started the repair on it not seeing it through and for some reason it's sat and uh, eventually been repossessed see that's all out of shape there as well so yeah i guess there finds out it's come out of the repossessions um car park lots whatever obviously it's brought out to me uh, they didn't show this in the um in the pictures so got right in here starts slash drives engine fault misfire that wasn't shown in the pictures and then it says done no power crushed out bonnet won't open crossed out and jordan um so now i don't really know what to think i haven't touched it i've literally just got back with it so i wanted to kind of go through the process on camera and just try and figure out what we've got here so obviously then I strapped it down, I always have a quick look inside them because I'm nosy and I can't wait to get back and now this is the part that things start to go downhill unfortunately <laughs> inside here, in the footwell is a V62 form most of you will probably know what these are for and these are for applying for a logbook when you haven't got one and that's a telltale sign that this has been through an auction somewhere and that the buyer had filled in the application ready to send off for the new logbook. The application is fully filled in in there. I'm not going to show you the details because uh, that wouldn't be fair. But yeah, and then just to finish that off, just to top it off and guarantee that we know I know it's gone through an auction. What's this letter say on it? Copart. <laughs> oh dear, what have I done? So 100% this car went through Copart at some point. I don't buy from Copart. Um, I think I've said that in the past. I don't buy from Copart uh, for various reasons. 
So we know it's an auction car at some point, someone's bought it. That, the date on that application is, is October 2021. So they bought it at the end of 2021. We're, we're like, what, 14 months after away from that. So like I say, it looks like they've repaired it. Maybe even been driving around in it like this, with it like this, but no MOT. Um, so it's got plates on it. It doesn't look that bad. And then for some reason, I, I, it's been crashed. Something's hit the back. Or like I said, it was in the repossessed yard. So was it, was it a repossession? It's a re bit of a, um, a funny one, really. Strangely, it's got really good Mitchell and Pike Sport 4s all around. I mean, yeah, that's a strange one. So yeah, um, not quite sure what's gone on here. I know for a fact the original damage was this corner, I can tell already. I can tell already. The wing's loose. There's no badge. The wing is proper loose. There's a mark there where the wing will have hit it. And there's a bit of rust on the corner of the bonnet where the wing would have hit the bonnet. Uh, a little bit of a nosy in here, I don't think you can see right now. Um, I'll get a torch. When I was strapping it up, I was having a little bit of a nosy in the wheel arches and there's a bit of a mark or a scuff on the underside of the chassis leg there. I don't think it's moved or bent in any way because the front of it, to be fair to them, lines up really well. But both uh, front arch liners are missing. The end of the crash bar is definitely a bit bent at the end, there you can see it. So yeah, I'm a bit concerned um, what we're going to find when we get in here. Because on the outside it looks great. Uh, or should I say it looks decent. <laughs> I like the black kidney girls, that's a nice addition. On the outside it looks okay. Behind there... Yeah, we uh, well, we're going to find out, aren't we? So, I mean, the first thing, obviously, is to figure out if it does or doesn't run. All the wiring hanging now and again in there, no splash guard. I don't think there was any damage on this side. You see the M badge there? That's it, it's missing on the other side. Inside, we do have some airbag damage. Steering wheel airbag and curtain airbag. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hazard a guess these belts are probably gone. But critically, the dashboard is fine. So, yeah. It's definitely a strange one. We've got the... Uh, oh, it's not a fuse panel, so not sure what that's all about. So, right. I mean, I have seen... Oh. I mean, it gets better, doesn't it? It gets better. Can we at least... You Oh, Christ, yeah, that's definitely knackered. Anyway, it popped. I haven't looked under the bonnet yet. I saw that. Nothing, really. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked under the bonnet yet. And I couldn't tell on the pictures whether it had coolant in it. But, I mean, the top of the slam panel, from what I could see... Uh, What's going on under here? Looks okay. I mean, I've had this bonnet open because it was open on the. Um... I think are they two the two pulls these aren't they? You'd pull it once, pull it again. I think. Is that right? Because they don't have like a release hatch clutch. Catch. Yeah, it says time two on it. I don't know if I've got it or not. The handle's ghost. Oh. Oh, come on. Bear with me a second. Right, got in it finally. The pair of pliers. They are a double release thing, but the original handle is broke, too broke to the point where it won't uh, pull it anymore. So I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, more paint missing there. I mean, I did, obviously this is the kind of picture I got about there. So I can see the turrets. 
I can see the tops draw the uh, front panel and it all looks pretty straight and, and right, doesn't it, in all fairness. Um, right, okay, so, I mean, engine's here, so that's a bonus. So it has got coolant in it. Whether, yeah, it's got plenty of coolant in it. So I'm just a bit sceptical why they've not managed to run it when it says that at some point it was running. Um, uh, chain drive. Twin power turbo, it doesn't mean it's got two turbos, does it? I don't think. Uh, oh no. Well, that chassis leg's fine. And that one is as well, so the legs are fine. I mean, all the rad pack, to be fair, from what I can see, looks okay. So I don't really know what is going on. You want to be on camera, Kermit? It'll be going your way in a minute. I haven't tried it yet. I've not put battery, I've not put a booster to it. I'm trying to find the dipstick. Uh, where is the dipstick? Am I being an idiot? Do they have one? Do they even have a dipstick? It possibly doesn't have a dipstick, so I'm going to have to Google that. So, uh, hmm. Okay, so yeah, apparently there is no dipstick. I didn't know. Any BMW after 2006 didn't come with a dipstick. That's what Google's saying. Uh, so I'm just going to try it because they will have tried it in the auction anyway. So what I do to it isn't going to cause any more damage. Uh, so I'm going to put power to it and I'm going to see what the inside says because I am very curious as to what's going to happen here. <laughs> uh, they did show the mileage, so they have had power to it and it was uh, 40 something, 40 summer. can't remember exactly, but uh, I'm most curious to see if this key does anything it does so the key you can hear the locks it does do some all right let's move some stuff i don't want to be standing on everything even though it's all broken anyway uh let's have a look let's see what happens uh, they are keyless these so Oh, the booster just turned off. Perfect timing as I get inside. So, yeah, I'll get out again. <clears throat> the problem with these cars are really, really dead. You have to have it on boost. And it doesn't stay on for long enough. Which is really annoying. Let's try again. So, press start button. Ignition is on. See, it does run. It does run. What? And it sounds enough, that's not missing either. What? Stop it. Christ, shut up. It's just doing, it's just annoying me already. It's got a slightly erratic idle. That's all it's got. If you watch it. See it?
but it does run. Well, it did run. <laughs> ah, these cars crack me up, I tell you. What's happened here? Oh, the freaking what? That's falling out now. Oh, my God. I'm falling out with this car, isn't it? Uh, it does run. Um, and there's obviously oil in it. Otherwise, it would have stopped a lot quicker than that. I wonder why it died, though. How were you betting? The battery's unplugged in the back and it died because the booster turned off. Is that what we're thinking? I bet you. I bet you any money the, the battery's disconnected in the boot. And the second it turns the battery, power, yeah, as soon as the booster turns off, all the power dies and that's why it's erratic idle. It's got, it's not, it's not got a battery on it. I bet you any money. Let me finish it up for a minute. So we need to figure out how we're gonna get in this boot because it wasn't opening then. Has he got, has he got a key? No, hasn't got a key. Why would it be that simple? Uh, See when we get it through the boot back. It's got to be a way, isn't there? Let's have a look. It's always interesting to see in boots as well, especially when they don't open them on the uh, auctions. Uh, uh, right. How do you get in the boot? There isn't no that. The corner cover looks like it's been out. Uh, all right, the plot thickens. They do split. How do you get in them? All right, Google time again, I'm afraid. I'm not a BMW man. I don't know anything about them really. I don't, never really had one, I don't think. Bear with me a moment, let me try and figure out how to get in this boot and we will continue with this mystery of a 220i. I've got in the boot. <laughs> um, it's currently running off the booster still, but I bet when this turns off boost, that engine stops running. So let's have a quick look in this boot. Ignition still on. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Am I right? I'm wrong. <laughs> the battery's connected. In some uh, type of fashion. <clears throat> no comment on that one. Yeah. What's that all about then, eh? Uh, but the, I mean, the battery's on, the battery's connected, it doesn't mean the battery's any good. Uh, but yeah, it's weird, it just turn, it turns itself off eventually. See if <coughs> can we maintain a little bit of revs, whether it will stay running. Let's try that. I mean, it, sound, it sounds fine. Excuse me, I do apologise. It sounds... <sighs> it's a bugger to start for some reason, I don't know. Oh, it's misfiring now. No, it's not. It's definitely power related, this. I bet you that battery is absolutely ghost in the back. 
the booster is still turned on at the minute. The booster's still on. Sounds really throaty. Like really throaty. As soon as you let the rest come down a bit, it tries to die. Let me come back to you shortly. It seems to be idling okay now. But that, um, that booster is still boosting. Still on. So... It sounds okay. Seems to sound okay. Why don't we see? I mean, there's only one headlight on. There's only one headlight on. So see what happens if we uh, take this booster off. Still running. At the moment, it's still running. Well, it definitely runs anyway, that is for sure. It doesn't seem to misfire. I think it's got power issues. I bet you this battery is um, is ghost. You know, I bet it's ghost. I'm not sure what's going on with that wiring. Uh. So we've got plenty of um, dual charge volts. 14.5 loads <coughs> but I suspect the engine sounds fine it actually sounds really well <coughs> Interesting, isn't it? This is the thing with buying salvage cars. You just do not have a clue what you're going to get. You don't have a clue what you're going to get. Oh, I thought something was rattling then. It's Chainsaw Man next door. All right, mix match of headlights, don't we? One side light works, other headlight works. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, I'm quite intrigued to see if there's any um, power when we turn off this uh, engine again. But should we see if we can just do a oil level check? Oh, not possible. No, it won't let me do oil level check. Uh, well, yeah, let's just turn it off. See if there's any power to it. Absolutely nothing. That battery is a no bueno, I believe. Absolutely no bueno. Stay in there. Two point nine volts. Yeah, it's no bueno. All right. So, what was looking like a bit of a disaster to start with, 
<coughs> he's now actually looking to be all right, but yeah, there's going to be definitely something hiding behind this bumper. I've been seeing what they've done to that wire on the back. <coughs> um, I think we're in for a few surprises on this car. I do. I'd like to see him solid enough. Not fit right. Not. Hmm. So I think the next thing is <coughs> we need to get it off this 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 uh, trailer and on the ramp and have a look under it. Because I like I said I bet there's gonna be there's gonna be something. Can't be this simple. Can it? So yeah, let's get on with that. Right, instead of messing around, um, lifting it off, I decided to just roll the car off the trailer and go and buy a battery. Because then it, it runs then, doesn't it? So the new battery is in. Proper start-stop battery, replacing that BMW one, which was probably the original. Uh, but yeah, it's knackered. Um, so yeah, we've got power. I've been looking at these two wires they've not cut them they put a diode in between them i'm presuming to skip that that must be some kind of pyro fuse maybe i don't know it's a weird one i don't i need to look into that see what that is because there's also a breaker on this side on the earth side but they've also had this big block un uncovered and there was another diode here that was down there doing they weren't doing out just in the floor Fuse box is there, and there's a fuse just lying here at the side. It's not blown, funnily enough, it's just lying there. So yeah, there's a few um, mysteries with this car. But like I said, now we should have a car that will start... That window go up. No, we should have a car that will start... What's all this crap down here? Oh no. Um. I'll set up for a third time. We should have a car that will start off the button now. So, yeah. I know why it's doing that misfiring now. Um, I'll show you. And why it sounds so throaty as well. The intake pipe. Snap. Oh, it's on is, um, is completely snapped. It's not attached to the... Um, Total body. So that's why it sounds really throaty and it's doing that occasional misfire or draw erratic idle. It's not misfiring. But I mean, um, it sounds really well actually. It does sound well. We haven't. Um, uh, sorry about that. Where was I? Uh, yeah, look, we were going to see if it actually dries, weren't we? That was it. Will it actually move under its own power? I mean, it's been running for a while now. Someone came in, that's why I turned camera. Got some. <laughs> uh, right, clutch down. Clutch feels great, in fairness. First, it's found a gear. Yeah, goes forwards. Goes backwards. Try second. Yeah. Well, there we go. It's a mystery, isn't it? It's some old locking wheel nut key. Um, I've been trying to get it to do. It's um oil level check. But it doesn't seem to want to. Oil level measurement not possible. Please observe service intervals. I mean, it's warm now. I bet. 
it's because of all the codes. It might be worth getting the scanner out and seeing what all these codes are. Because I know there's a pile of airbag codes. Um, just try and delve in a little bit deeper as to what the actual history was, what happened. I mean, what will be a very good idea um, would be to do a car vertical on this. It'll show us then the damage uh, at Copa in 2021. But it does look like this appears to be, like I said, a repossession of a guy who bought it, started repairing it, for some reason it got put to a side. He never, never saw it through and it got repossessed off him, doesn't it? It's like I said, 14 months, over 14 months since it went through Copart. And I'll bet we'll find it's done no miles. Uh, but yeah, from all look at it, they've done a real poor paint job on this bonnet. It's dull as hell, like really dull, like rattle cam dull. Now whether that'll polish up, um, I don't know, we'll just have to see. This wing is an aftermarket wing, doesn't sound right, and also this body line, see how sharp that is, to how, how smooth and gradual that is. And then on the other side, uh, both body lines are smooth and gradual. That other one's really sharp, that. So I'll have to find the wings, I'm not happy with that wing. And then yeah, we'll have to pull it apart and have a look what's going on behind there. It's not going to be difficult fixing the pyro if you sing him a jig. But I did just see a light, I think, for pedestrian protection, so it doesn't seem like they've um, they've changed these either. Or maybe they have, and they just haven't cleared the codes. I don't know. Um, the bonnet's a bit of a bugger to open and shut. I don't want to shut it. So there's that mystery to solve. There's quite a bit here yeah, to, uh, to look at. One headlight works, one side light works. <laughs> but I think all in all, actually, it's turning out to be a all right buy. I mean, the indicators work, so that's a bonus. Now it's running, I'm pretty happy in all honesty. I do believe we've got some suspension damage as well on this side. That wheel is curving in at the top and it's towing out. So I suspect the strut, strut issue, strut damage there. They must have, I bet you, it was hit here, that wheel's gone back. They've done the bottom arm, but not changed the strut by the looks of it. But again, yeah, we'll get it on the ramp to find out that lot. But all in all, it runs, so what, what can, I can't complain, can I? It was listed as an on-runner. I've got it back and luckily it does run, so we got lucky again. So I think that's going to be it. Uh, you guys can uh, put in the comments what you think the story is to this car. It is a, definitely a strange one. I will do a car vertical and have that ready for the next video I think. And we'll, we'll look at that in the next video because it will definitely give us a clue where to be looking on this car for, you know, Hidden surprises, shall we say? Hidden surprises. Um, but all in all, yeah, really happy. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching as always. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up to let you notified of the next video where we'll do the car vertical and we'll, uh, we'll delve into trying to figure out if they've done everything right behind there and everything's fine to continue just on face value. Or we need to start fixing stuff behind the panels first, the body, do all the body, the bumper and stuff, and go from there. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.